When you're using Windows, you're renting it from Microsoft. But when you're running Linux, you own that thing. Welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. You have a lot of people these days that are sick and tired of using Windows. And they have pretty good reason to be tired of it. And they're looking for something else, something that's actually good. Well, if you are not technical and just want to know what Linux is and how it can benefit you, this is the video for you. We're going to break it all down in simple terms, and at the end of this video, you should have a solid understanding of how you can get started with Linux. And with all of that being said, let's dig right in. Okay, so the first question that you may ask is, what is Linux? Which is a fair question. Linux is a family of operating systems. There are many versions of Linux for you to choose from. For the most part, they're all comprised of open source components. Essentially, what's happening here is somebody took a bunch of projects that were open source and they put them all together like cement blocks to build a house. And that house is something that you can have free of charge, which is really generous of them. So you might be wondering, well, if nobody's making money off of it, how does it work? Linux is not maintained by solely uh, volunteer developers. It also gets a lot of support from big corporations. Now, this shouldn't scare you, because everything's, for the most part, open source. Meaning that there's no secrets hidden in the code. And if there's a problem with the code, it's able to be identified by anybody in the world who happens to look at the source code and know what they're doing. So despite the fact that yes, there are big companies who are contributing directly to Linux, uh, that's more of a sign of stability than it is a warning sign. So one thing you're probably wondering is how is Linux different from Windows? And I want to start with the most important point, and that is the fact that Linux is made for the benefit of the person who owns it. And that's a clear distinction, two clear distinctions. It's for your benefit, and you own it. You see, when you install Windows, you don't really own Windows. You're renting it from Microsoft, which kind of sucks when you paid hundreds if not thousands of dollars for the computer. So you're renting your operating system, and Microsoft Windows is not made for your benefit. It's made for Microsoft's benefit. It's made for advertisers' benefit. It's made for everybody's benefit except you. And that shows in the user experience. Let's be frank, the latest versions of Windows are a hodgepodge mess of different UI frameworks. And everything is very inconsistent, everything's very jumbled together. It's just not a simple or usable experience, not to mention the tons of ads that you see. So this is where it differs from Linux. First of all, in Linux, there's no ads, so it's not something you need to worry about. My point is that Linux is made for your benefit. It is something that you own when you install it. Nobody can take Linux from you. It is 100% your computer, which is very different from what you get with Windows. And obviously, like I said, there's no ads throughout the whole system, and it's truly made to be usable and used by you to do great things. That's a very big difference. Some more differences between Linux and Windows. First one is that it's more secure. Uh, there's a lot of debate about whether it's security through obscurity or true improved security. And I will say I have crunched the numbers looking at vulnerabilities and severity of vulnerabilities across multiple Linux distributions and Windows. And the fact of the matter is there are, there are more vulnerabilities for Windows but the ones that come out for Linux are of higher severity, and it's, it's a really close match. It's, it's about even. However, I will say that Linux is more secure in principle than Windows, just because of the way it's architected. And that brings me to my next point. It's quite easy. Like, Linux is way easier to manage and use than Windows. And you might be scratching your head when you hear me say that, because Everybody talks about how complicated Linux is, but if you look at it objectively, Microsoft Windows is a far more complicated product than just about any Linux distribution. Now, there are Linux distributions that are more complicated, 
and that serves a power user market, but for the most part, all the popular distributions, they're all very user-friendly. Again, these things are made for you to use, meaning that it's easy to use, and that it all makes sense, and it's simple to administer. So essentially, the reason why you think Linux is hard is just because you're used to Windows. When you first learned Windows, I can promise you it will have been more difficult than you learning Linux. Another difference between Linux and Windows is that you have full control over your computer. Like I said before, when you're using Windows, you're renting it from Microsoft. But when you're running Linux, you own that thing. And when it's your computer that you physically purchased and own, you should own every aspect of it, full stop. I think that alone is enough reason to switch to Linux from Windows. So you might be wondering, okay, what's what's wrong with Windows? Why, why are people trying to get away from it? And there's three major reasons for that. First of all, it's bloated, and it has ads everywhere, so it's full of pre-installed software, redundant applications, things like the settings app and the control panel that link back and forth to each other. It's just a complicated, bloated, advertisement-riddled mess. The second reason that you might want to stop using Windows is because of privacy. It's no secret that everything you do on a Windows computer gets sent to Microsoft. Every time you open an application, every time you open an application on Windows, Microsoft knows about it. And yes, you can turn this off, but at the end of the day, when a Windows update comes out, it's liable to switch that setting accidentally back to whatever Microsoft prefers. And finally, you might not want to use Windows because it's getting pumped full of AI slop. Do you want Copilot for Windows? Copilot for Word? Copilot for Edge? Copilot for VS Code? Copilot for fucking Notepad? Copilot for... for Paint? No one's wanting this. Nobody asked for this. And... Uh, uh, it's frustrating. If you want to see my full rant about why Windows sucks, I'll leave the video linked in the description down below. But those are the main points that we covered. Okay, so essentially I've told you Linux is a better experience, Linux is easier to use, you own Linux, and it doesn't have advertisements. So how do you actually get Linux? It gets complicated, but we're gonna simplify everything. So Linux is distributed in the form of distributions. Uh, these are pre-packaged, complete operating systems Basically, they took all of the cinder blocks and they built a house out of it, and they made that blueprint for that house available to you, which is pretty great. You just have to bring your own hardware. So the first thing you have to do on to get started on Linux is to pick a distribution. There are many, many, many different distributions, and it can be very overwhelming at first, but I'm going to boil it down to a few safe choices to get you started. So, if you're not technical and you want a computer that just, just works, that does web browsing, does basic tasks, does office work, if you want something that's gonna just, just work, then you probably want an immutable distribution. And I know that's a big scary word, so let me explain what I mean by that. An immutable distribution essentially is a version of Linux that cannot be broken. It will always work regardless of any issue with the software, most of the time. But the whole idea of them is that they're super, super stable. Now, you do give something up in exchange. They take away a level of control that a lot of people really enjoy having over their Linux systems. Another downside is that you'll only be able to get applications in the form of flat packs. Usually, most immutables have this, but for all intents and purposes, you're going to be using flat packs. So, in the Linux world, there are different ways to package software and deliver it to you. There's old package managers like Apt and DNF. Don't worry about those. Look, there's an app store. It's a graphical app store. You open it. You click a button to update everything. You click a button to install something don't worry about what it's using under the hood. But just for your information, flat packs are the te technical term for the type of applications you can install on Linux distributions, especially immutables. 
Now, if you're wanting to learn, and you're really wanting to get your feet wet and increase your technical knowledge, well then you might want to start with something like Linux Mint. And this is where we enter the discussion about desktop environments. Because there are many distributions, yes, but most of those distributions offer different desktop environments. What is a desktop environment? Well, it's basically the furniture in your living room, right? So the, open, the operating system is the house comprised of different software parts that are bricks. Your operating system is the interior design, it's the living room, it's the layout of the furniture. That's the desktop environment. So you want to pick a desktop environment that works the way you like to work. And the great news here is that there's no shortage of different desktop environments. The bad news here is that there's no shortage of desktop environments. Uh, so an easy, an easy popular choice is Linux Mint. It comes with a desktop environment that's very much like Windows 7. If you want something a little more Mac-like, you can look at Fedora Workstation. It comes with a GNOME desktop environment, which behaves uniquely, but it's very opinionated. But if you like the opinions that it has, then you're going to love it. And finally, if you want something that's like modern Windows, but super customizable, you're looking for KDE. You can make KDE look like any operating system. It's really customizable. But the default look, the default behavior, is very Windows-like. Kind of like Windows 10 or Windows 11, but without all the bloat and all the ads. So again, I want to point out that Linux is very easy to use. It's very easy to keep up to date, it's very easy to administrate, and you should not be afraid of it. It's, I, I will say, it is easier to use than Windows. Full stop. Is it different? Yes, it is different, and in good ways. And that does mean that you're going to have to relearn a lot of how you use your computer. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. The terminal. You've heard everybody say it, and they say if you're going to use Linux, you have to use the scary terminal, and it's a bad experience, and no one wants to use that. You're going to have to use it on Linux, and that's the biggest downside that I can think of for new users. Look, the reason behind it is quite simple. Let's say you run into a problem on your computer, so you Google, how do I fix it? Well, consider the fact that there are many, many, many different desktop environments. And so somebody would have to sit down and write a guide for each individual environment, and then those guides would go out of date quickly because the environments would change, and it becomes a very real boulder up a hill kind of effort. The common denominator between most Linux distributions is the terminal. It is the one constant that you can rely on. And so when you run into a problem on Linux and you look up how to fix it, oftentimes it's going to give you commands that you want to paste into your terminal. Now, a word of advice. Be careful about what you copy and paste into your terminal. If you don't understand a terminal command, then paste it into ChatGPT first and have it explain it to you. That way you understand what it's doing before you run it. Again, you never want to run terminal commands that you don't have an idea of what they're doing. You should, for the most part, always run it through ChatGPT, make sure it's safe, make sure it's doing what you think it should do, and that will very quickly get you familiar with the terminal. I have a whole video on using the terminal that's oriented for beginners. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. So at the end of the day, should you consider using Linux? I think yes, absolutely. If you saw any screenshots of distributions or desktop environments that really tickled your fancy, uh, I'll leave links in the description down below so you have an easy way to get a hold of them. And uh, I, I hope that this can be a great starting point for somebody. If I can help even one person start to wrap their head around Linux and consider switching to it, I've done my job. So anyway, thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos, not all of them are beginner focused, but all of them are technology related. If you want to see more of that, you know what to do. There's a subscribe button right there. We're on track to hit 4,000 subs in the next month, which I'm so grateful for. Thank you all so much for listening to me talk. It really, I, 
I know it's not a lot, but it's more than I ever expected, and I'm very grateful for all of it. And if you liked the video, well, there's not much you can do, unfortunately. You see, the I the the you see the action of liking a video is something that's been left to the winds of time. I've heard rumors that there's a button that looks like this, and if you click that button, allegedly it might count as liking the video. Nobody knows for sure. This is ongoing research. So click that button and tell me what it does. I'd love to find out. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.